Hi, this is Gilles, the Radio Prepper. You know, I'm a big fan of the half-wave and fed antenna. Not so much of the random wire antenna, and for good reasons. There is still a lot of confusion between those two. I actually have a video about this. Just uh, search for a Radio Prepper confusion and you'll find it. Basically, a half-wave and fed antenna uses a 49 to 1 or 64 to 1 impedance transformer, while a random wire antenna, meaning it's not a half-wave wire, uses a 9 to 1 unun, also a transformer. The unfed half-wave using a 49 to 1 or 64 to 1 is primarily a single band antenna, although it can be a multi-band antenna using harmonics, but it's not its primary function. The only advantage that I see uh, with the uh, random wire antenna is, first of all, they can be shorter than a half wave, so you have a shorter antenna. The usual length is, for example, 8 meters, about 26 feet, I think. And they are uh, a multi-band antenna using a tuner. Of course, you might ask, why not use a random wire antenna all the time? Well, they're not as efficient as a half wave, and they produce a lot of uh, common mode currents, which can wreak havoc on electronics, especially uh, keels. And that's probably why a lot of people confuse them and uh, think that the half wave and fed uh, doesn't work well. Of course, they mean the random wire antenna. It's just not the same thing. But there are still advantages to uh, using the random wire antenna. Like I said, it can be shorter and uh, it's multi-band. So I want to make one, but I want to make one that has a choke because I'm always, I always have to use a choke, an RF choke to get rid of those common mode currents that flow back on the uh, shield of the coax. And that's more wires. That's two boxes instead of one, you know, patch cables. Uh, it's just not very practical, it's just messy. So I made this uh, 3D printed box with a space for the choke. So that will be an FT140-43 toroid. And for the uh, UNUN, and that will be a T106-2 toroid. This way, I only have one box for both of them. I wonder about the interactions between the two because they're fairly close to one another, but I guess uh, testing will, will tell. This is the uh, FT140-43, so 43 material, and this will be used for the choke. And this is the uh, T106-2 powdered iron core that's going to be used for the 921 Unun. Now, some people will say you shouldn't use a powdered iron core for the 921 Unun. I understand because, you know, theoretically, uh, it shouldn't work that well. But I uh, made a video and tested both. I, I made a uh, 921 with, you know, oh, not that finger, sorry. <laughs> I made a, a 921 Unun using the FT140-43 and the T106-2. And guess what? On HF the T106-2 won that battle. So that's what I'm going to use. And that's uh, what you find in the Urshi, the uh, Hawaii Emergency Radio Club uh, document that uh, describes it. And uh, so we'll see. The only thing I regret not doing with this box, and I might correct that later, is that I don't have a space for a uh, connection for a counterpoise. Uh, with a half-wave unfed, you don't use a counterpoise. It's not necessary. It's a half-wave antenna. But with a random wire antenna, I could get rid of more common mode currents if I had a counterpoise. But the counterpoise, uh, in my opinion, should be connected between the two. So between the choke and the uh, unun. This way I can get rid of the common mode currents and then the choke gets rid of what's left of it. So I might uh, drill a hole here, put a, a small two millimeter banana uh, connector here for a uh, counterpoise, or maybe uh, just put a wire connected to uh, the ground here in the middle and just like, a, I don't know, maybe a 10 foot wire, something like that, four meters maybe. Uh, I'm not sure yet. All right, because this website does cost me much more than what it brings me, 
I did sign up for an affiliate program with EMP Shield. We are all concerned about EMP's, you know, electromagnetic pulse, especially for radio equipment. And EMP Shield does provide protection for your whole home, for your vehicle and for your radios. Yes, for your antennas. I was a bit skeptical, I have to admit, but after looking at all the documentation they have and the uh, military testing they did, and those devices they uh, they offer are extremely fast to protect you uh, against EMPs, but also, of course, lightning. So it does look pretty legit to me. I got you a coupon for $50 off at EMP Shield, so don't forget to use it. It's Radio Prepper in one word or lower case. By the way, do use the link down below uh, rather than going to the site directly. That gives me more brownie points and you do save 50 bucks and I get a kickback. So don't hesitate to have a look at their website. I am learning more about it myself and all the products that uh, they offer. And I'll tell you the way the world is going right now. I think it's a good precaution. The solar cycle is uh, coming back and there will be a lot of solar activity. So we could get a natural EMP that's always a threat and you want to protect your electronics, your toaster, your washing machine, your oven, everything that has an electronic chip in it is at risk. And you need a device that's fast enough to ground everything in nanoseconds so that when the power comes back, <laughs> you still have your electric and electronic devices. Once again, the coupon is Radio Prepper, one word, lowercase, and that will give you $50 off. I think I have everything I need here. I have my box with the BNC connector and little wing nut. I have one millimeter uh, enamel wire. I have some, uh, I think that's RG316 coax, but it really doesn't matter. I have my T106-2, my FT140-43. Uh, where's my solder? That's what I'm missing. Okay. <laughs> First thing to do is to immobilize my uh, coax here, so I'm using a tie wrap. That counts for one turn. I think I'm going to go uh, five turns, then cross over, then another five. Just so that the uh, coax comes out uh, the opposite way. So that's two. Nice and tidy. Five turns, now I'm going to cross over. Remember, every time the wire goes through the core, that's a turn, and five on the other side. So that will be 11 turns total. Oops, that's not very nice. Okay, that's turn number seven. And five, that's turn 11. And I'm going to attach it here the same way. Maybe not perfect, but that's good enough. It seems to fit nicely, very good. Let's see where I have to cut here. I uh, separate the shield from the core and I'm going to do that on both ends and uh, take the insulation off here a little bit at the tip. I'll put a little bit of solder on that and that's it for the choke. For the next part, the uh, T106-6 for uh, dash two <laughs> for the Unun, I need uh, three times about 20 inches of uh, copper enamel wire. You can use whatever you want, really. Uh, colored wire is nice too because you can uh, you won't make a mistake when you have to connect them, and uh, it's about 55 centimeters. I'm going to start like this and uh, I have to keep them in the same order uh, throughout the winding. And that is nine turns. You can see they're not all bunched up together. They are three by three. And you have to make sure that you don't uh, cross over a wire over another one. They have to stay in the same order. Don't cut those too short uh, quite yet because one wire is going to have to go around here and go up to the front. Now we're going to take the middle one here on top, cross it over like so, and we're going to take the last one here 
over here to be connected to this one. And you solder those two together. Of course, I have to remove the insulation. And of course, I kind of messed up. Well, not really, but it's this wire that should have been longer because that's the antenna wire. I cut it too short, so I'm going to have to solder another piece of wire on it and extend it. So you have two wires on the left here, on the top side, and you have two wires on the right, on the bottom side. This one is going to be the antenna, so I'm going to flip it up. And now I'm going to take the bottom right wire here, and this one will be connected together with the top left wire. I'm going to uh, take the insulation off here, cut this off and solder them together. That's going to be connected to the center of the B and C, in this case, the center of the chalk coax. I probably didn't clean it well enough here. A little bit of heat should take care of that. So we are left with uh, three connections, the antenna wire here, the center of the, uh, well, either the BNC if you use a single uh, toroid unun, or in this case, it's going to be, of course, the uh, center of the coax coming out of the choke. And this is going to be the ground of the coax, or in case of a single toroid unun, once again, that's going to be the ground of the BNC. Now we have our two toroids ready, uh, the 9 to 1 unun, the choke, and I need to connect them. Now it's time for me to modify the case here so I can put a ground connection. All right, I'm going to eyeball it. Uh, famous last words. Six millimeters for the two millimeter banana. And now I'm going to drill a 9mm, enlarge it to 9mm. Fortunately, PLA doesn't crack. And yes, I do have a step drill. <laughs> Oops. Ouch. I didn't want to go through. I guess the uh, counterpoise will have to be on the other side. You know, maybe the, the wrong side here will be a lanyard attachment. Oh, how about that? All right, here's my solution. I put a kitchen knife in the middle. Excellent. Now my uh, ground banana connector is uh, installed. I have put some Loctite, so it's a little crooked. It's not exactly in the middle, so don't eyeball things, <laughs> don't do what I do. I will modify the uh, STL file for the box before I publish it on Thingiverse. Let's start with the, uh, the choke. And I'm going, of course, to fill this with hot glue, bury it under glue. I love goops of all kinds, <laughs> epoxies, hot glue, modern chemistry. I'm going to start with the uh, the ground of the choke here. I probably should have checked that uh, there's no uh, short before gluing it. <laughs> ah, confidence is a harsh mistress and it's okay. Now does the ground connect to the ground? Yes. Does the center connect to the center? And I'll mention again, by the way, this uh, KM601, pretty cool. I'll solder the uh, center connector of the coax from the choke and finally the ground. Press it in. Now I just have to connect the uh, antenna wire here and yes it is a bit too short. Now we're talking. Don't use epoxy on toroids by the way, it just doesn't work. All right, I have uh, 550 ohms of uh, with those two resistors in series here between uh, the antenna wire and the ground of the UNUN. So let's check it out. I'm scanning from 3.5 or 3 megahertz to 23, I think. Let's see what happens. 
Oh, that's pretty interesting. So it's not that great on uh, on 40 meters because I would want to use it on 40 meters. Definitely not good on uh, on 80 meters. So that will not be used for 80 meters. But starting at, uh, you know, I would say 40 meters down, I mean up <laughs> to uh, probably fine on 10 meters as well. I will scan. All right, let's do uh, 7 megahertz, well, 6.9 plus 20, so that will get us uh, 10 meters as well, and we'll know approximately anyway for uh, 11 meters as well. All right, very good. So it's not too bad on 40 meters, it's 2.5 to 1, eh, that's not great, but that's probably about 15% of losses, and uh, then it gets better as we go up and it starts climbing again uh, after 24 megahertz and it's still very very good uh, on 10 and 11 meters i'm sure i'm going to uh, glue the uh, cover on now i do wish i had epoxy for this uh, remember not around the toroids but for the cover unfortunately i'm out of epoxy so i'll just have to use uh, neoprene glue here and that should be good enough. And we are done. All right, this video is long enough, so I have to clean up and uh, don't forget to subscribe. Don't miss the uh, second part of this video, which will be the uh, field testing, of course, with an eight meter wire, maybe something else, counterpoise, without counterpoise, we'll try different things. Uh, also check, check the uh, little bell down below so that you get a reminder for the uh, second video. Once again, thank you very much to my Patreon subscribers. Uh, do consider please becoming a Patreon subscriber. Thank you very much to all the people who uh, gave me uh, coffee donations down below and uh, uh, crypto uh, addresses as well. And until next time, have a good one.